Wednesdays. ABC Wednesday, October 9th. Y'all can play all day. We want books. We want paper towels in the classroom. Bet you want raises, too. I'm well, still waiting on the paper towels. Abbott Elementary returns with the new season. We asked the district for more after-school programs. They gave us $50 for class pets instead. Critics cheer. Abbott Elementary continues to be one of the funniest and most beloved shows on TV. What y'all doing out there? Taking bribes. Proud of y'all. Abbott Elementary, season premiere Wednesday, October 9th on ABC and stream on Hulu. You're listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Well, Jack, I've been able to rewire the central control panel for all the good that it does us. Yeah, if you were here, you could give me a hand. Not that I blame you. The mutual stage wouldn't do well this week without its principal character. And next week, Aiden's wedding would be another good reason to not be here. But in the meantime... Oh! Oh, that's the Audi. Well, it's uh, charged up this week's third episode, Freelance. And if all goes well, this trickle charging option might get us the spark we need to get the old girl up and running. So the fourth ambit, third episode, begins right here on the Sonic Society. My name is Giles. I never even knew what a tracker was. I certainly never wanted to be one. But then I started finding things out. I need to tell you about the second ambit. And the third and the fourth. There is a fourth ambit, and you need to start thinking about it. It's thinking about you. The Fourth Ambit Episode 3 Freelance Okay. Uh, The wardens have cycled through. They'll be gone for about an hour. (laughs) An hour of time to me, anyway. I have no idea how long that is in the gray. Probably only a minute or so. (laughs) They probably have my circadian rhythm off and my temporal esthesia cranked up so that my incarceration will seem as long as possible. A life sentence is a little more extreme when you're incarcerated digitally. Anyway, uh, this will be my third entry. Okay. Uh, after the Nimbus project, I continued working for Facia Corps. Uh, after what had happened at Nimbus, they started giving me even more challenging work. They assumed that I knew what I was doing, which wasn't the case, but I am a quick learner, and I did start getting the hang of things. I found that the Distal University Skycar was an extremely useful device, and I used it regularly. This meant that I had to go to Borel's apartment with some frequency, which he always complained about. <laughs> But the truth was, he enjoyed having me around. He liked the money I passed him for access to the Sky Car, but he liked me too. You done? Yeah. I'll need to come in again tomorrow. Jesus! You practically live here. I should just give you a key. In fact, he did give me a key. I moved in. It was convenient. <laughs> and for all his rough edges, I liked Borel too. He always played the annoyed, impatient grump, but he really wasn't. Well, except with Fiverr. (laughs) Five made him truly grumpy. Fiverr was a pewter kid I'd given a false gold uni to. Somehow he'd found someone to give him the stent surgery he needed to make use of it, and now he was constantly on the make. A pewter kid who wanted more. To Borel, he looked just like the pewter kids who begged at the Numa stations. Five made him uncomfortable. For me, though, well, I'd been there myself. And in the back of my mind, I hoped something would come along that would let me help him in some way. And then Facia Corps gave me an assignment that provided the opportunity. They wanted me to track to the action apex of the Tanazaki Park, a modern-day samurai thing. It was an easy gig, but time-consuming, because in order to get to the climax, to the action apex, I'd have to play through the entire system. I'd have to play through it, or someone would. Hey, guys. Five. Come on in. Thanks. Borel here? No, he's at Distal U. Not too bad. I kind of like getting under his skin. How are things out town 11? Oh, you know, the bone's the bone. Still upstreaming through the utilities with that stent? Yeah, yeah. 
I've been going some places too, not just the Ambit Green. I found a bar, the BTS Toad. You been there? No. They have open tables there, and I've been doing good at Canasta. Where do you get the credits to gamble with? Same places you used to, cleaning houses. Those are pewter credits, though. <laughs> what kind of tracker are you? You can find people to sell you gold credits, you know. What's the exchange? <laughs> Bad. That's why I play Canasta. I can usually double or sometimes triple my cash. <laughs> Listen, five. I got a gig that came up, and I might be able to use your help. I could pay you in gold credits oh, if you'd be that willing. Is hang on, hang on, tracking? hang on. No, 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 not tracking. Just playing an interact and rest stopping it. For Whatever, me. I'll do it. It's not something you. I'll do it. I'm only going to be able to pay you. I'll if do you it. To say that Fiverr was enthusiastic about the job would be the understatement of the century. I gave him enough credits to play the game through. I went with him for his first immerse, just to make sure he was all right with it. Once inside the Tanizaki Park, I was immediately thankful that I had subbed the job out to Five. The park's panoramic was exotic and interesting, but they obviously weren't targeting English-speaking patrons. Their translation gear was primitive. Now, I don't mind foreign interacts when their translators are good, but when the vocals are delayed too much and come after the avatar's mouth has stopped moving, it just ruins the whole experience for me. Five didn't seem to mind, though. Are you the Kawabata brothers? Yeah, we are. He is. He's traveling alone. I'm just seeing him off. Welcome to you both, but especially you, M. Kawabata. The functionary who greeted us at the top of the game was a drop-dead gorgeous scar. She had long blue-black hair and an alluringly innocent face. When her translation gear lagged behind, she would lapse into a timid smile while she waited for our response. I found it annoying, but Five seemed intrigued. Her name was Kikuko, and she ushered us out of the airport and into a waiting limousine. Once inside, she started the exposition that begins all of these kinds of interacts. You must be very excited about the dedication ceremony. Would you like me to tell you how the preparations have been coming along? No. Why don't you tell me about yourself? Five. You live around here? Five. This isn't a flesh park. Just let the scars lead you through the standard script, all right? I'm sorry. I wasn't able to understand what you said. Don't worry about it. Go ahead and tell him about the dedication ceremony. Certainly. The new wing of the museum will house the armaments of the latter Muromachi shogunate. When the daimyo's power began to increase... If his avatar was faithfully reproducing his expression in the gray, Five was having the time of his life. And I was just as glad not to have to go through the entire interact. It looked like it was going to be fairly predictable. The Kakuko scar finished giving us the background information just as we got to the museum, where a break-in just happened to be occurring. We all got a good look at the guy who seemed to be in charge of the operation before our limo was sideswiped. Our driver was killed, and the bad guys took off. I left five to play it through. Undoubtedly, he and Kakuko would be targeted by the bad guys because they could identify their leader. They'd go into hiding, fleeing from the bad guys' private army, probably including throwback samurai swordmasters. Blah, blah, blah. It was a formulaic interact. But five had never been through anything like it, so he could live the cliché unselfconsciously. He would love it. And I was going to love it, too. For all souls are new, I was hot on the job, so I had some time to myself. I looked forward to a relaxing few days. The very next day, though, I went to the GT Squared, an ambit bar I'd come to frequent. A lot of trackers hung out there, along with EH engineers, the elite code writers who worked the event horizon of the ambit. It was a low-key bar with a lot of high-powered patrons, and no filters were allowed, so you could always see everyone who was there. I met Ayo, a tracking friend of mine, and we talked for a while, but then he left, and he hadn't been gone for more than a few minutes when another Ra approached me. May I sit? Sure. Thank you. You're Fraser, aren't you? Yeah. Fraser was the false ID I'd been given by Fascia Corps, and it was the one I normally used in the ambit. Anyone who knew me as a tracker knew me as Fraser. I'm E. Eddie. Pleasure. 
This might sound strange, but would you mind if I switched us to a private pipe? Okay. Thank you. I wanted to approach you with a business proposition, and the nature of this work requires a certain amount of discretion. This guy was using a vocal filter. Now he had switched us to a private pipe and had frozen his avatar's mouth. I'd heard of people doing that, presumably so that nobody in the bar could read their avatar's lips, but it was real cloak and dagger stuff. I'd never seen it before. Like you, I too am a tracker. I've been following some of your work for Fascia Corpse, and it's quite good. Well, thank you, I guess. What is this about? I work freelance. I have some very powerful clientele. One of my clients has just approached me with a time-sensitive project, but I'm tied up with some other things right now. I can't do it myself. This is a valuable client, though, and I need to get this thing done for them. Interested? I'm listening. Have you ever done freelance? No. Working freelance has certain drawbacks. You have to be comfortable working without a net. You don't have the protection of a corpse behind you. You have to cover your own tracks, and if you're caught, you're caught. There's nobody to bail you out. Freelance trackers end up in permanent incarceration much more frequently than trackers associated with corpses. It's also more lucrative. How lucrative? If you'd like to do this job for me, I'm prepared to pay you up to 200,000 credits. I immediately wished that I had frozen my avatar's mouth as he had done. It exactly represented what my RL mouth was doing. It dropped open. 200,000? That's right. 100,000 up front. What, uh, what do I have to do? I want you to sabotage Nyad, the new park of Senexa Corpse. Now, Fascia Corpse was forcing me to track for them, which already involved me in illegal activity. Granted, outright sabotage was taking it to a different level, but I was already working under threat of incarceration. And... 200,000 CS credits. I agreed. Ieti passed me a dossier with information on the Nyad Park and the address to a freestanding account with 100,000 credits in it. The project was basically to ruin the opening of the Nyad Entertainment Park. Whoever wanted it done wanted it to embarrass Senexa Corpse, Nyad's parent corporation, so it was crucial that nobody know anything was wrong until the actual opening. The second half of the payment would depend on how well the sabotage worked. Only if the opening failed completely would the entire 100,000 be released. It wasn't hard to think of ways to spoil a park's opening. Sussing out the security was the first step. A little information gathering followed by a little reconnaissance. It didn't take long. Senexa had a healthy advertising campaign for Nyad, and with the opening only a week away, information on the park was everywhere. They had flyers with teaser buttons at almost every kiosk in the ambit. Most of the teaser ads you see are geared toward an adolescent mentality, whether or not it's adolescents who are hitting them. So punching the teaser button is widely known as squeezing the whitehead. <laughs> I went to a kiosk, tore off a flyer for Nyad, and squeezed. A battle is raging on the surface between Dryads and men. The ravening humans are out to conquer all the land, and the Dryads have been abandoned by their allies. All except the Nyads, the water people. You are a Nyad. You are being sent on a desperate mission to outflank the humans. Along the way, you will encounter creatures out of your worst nightmare. The luring sylphs of unimaginable beauty. Duplicitous diplomats. 
From the mountain tarns, you will travel to the depths of the ocean, through streams, lakes, and underground rivers that flow through... It was standard fantasy adventure fare, the hook being that it all took place underwater. On the flyer was an invitation to tour the Nyad Park prior to its opening. A behind-the-scenes look, it said. It was an invitation a prospective saboteur couldn't pass up. On your right is the Nereid University, and on the left is the split in the continental shelf known as Occam's Razor. This is another Tier 2 environment. There are six tiers to the park's structure, so we're really only scratching the surface. But it gives you an idea of the innovation going on here. See the coders over by the temple there? Well, they must be on break now, but they are working hard to make sure that the immersion experience is 360 by 60 OF. Let's go take a closer look at Occam's Razor. It was an extraordinarily boring tour, but it did provide me with one good piece of information. Many of the coders were wearing Hickson Nguyen Corps badges. Apparently, Senexa was subcontracting a lot of their work with Hickson Nguyen. I had been tracking long enough and had spoken with enough other trackers to know that the modus operandi in situations like this would be to hack Hickson Nguyen and get an access code from them to get into the park. I, however, used a different method. I applied for a job at Hickson Nguyen. Other trackers didn't do this because they didn't want to leave a trail that could be followed, but I had two gold-class unis, so for me, that wasn't a problem. I applied using my Sylvian ID. The Hickson Nguyen HR department was entirely automated until you got to the interview stage. (laughs) You write code like a pro, but there's nothing in your background to suggest you've ever done this type of work. It's always been a hobby. What makes you want to make it your profession now? It's personal. Oh, well, I'll tell you, M. Sylvian, you are overwhelmingly overqualified, but with all due respect, you're going to have to give me some reason to believe that you're going to stay on the job for more than a few days. See, I look bad if I hire people who aren't serious about their work. I'm just getting over a substance abuse problem. Frankly, what I need most right now is to get into an entirely new routine. The best lies vary only slightly from the truth. I was hired. The first assignment I was given was a patch job on a malfunctioning routine in a corporate node. They were starting me on something simple and not time-sensitive. I rewrote my assignment tag and headed straight for Nyad. After a brief encounter with the foreman, I got access and started to look around. It was a surreal landscape. Because it was still under construction, cosmetic detailing wasn't yet in place. All of the renderings were simplified angular polygons, and all of the scars were featureless mannequins. At times, it felt a bit like wandering through a child's playset. At other times, it was like inhabiting a cubist painting. And the entire park interact was run through their underwater filter, so I, and all the coders working there, had to swim. It felt like a dream. Everything moved with an elegant, flowing motion. And as I swam from one place to another, things came in and out of focus more quickly than they would have in air. A distant smear became a shimmering house. And then as I passed, looking back, it quickly became less solid again, quavering like an underwater mirage until it was gone. There was something hypnotic about the experience. The gear that allowed the underwater breathing was very good. For a few minutes it felt unnatural, but when you became accustomed to it, the heavy, filling, nourishing feel of water in the lungs seemed right somehow. It made you wonder how insubstantial air could ever feel satisfying. I wandered past a village where coders were doing crowd control, organizing groups of scars to make a realistic looking panic scene. I stopped and watched a coder working on the attack sequence of a guild humanoid. Apparently the thing's gills weren't flaring out menacingly enough. The coder would re-render a still of the thing, apply the changes to the scar, and run the sequence again. Then he'd shake his head and go back in for more changes. A school of squids darted past. 
As I proceeded, I began to get a feel for the overall arc of the Interact. The Immersi started in a Nyad community that existed in some mountain lakes. The ambassador job took them downstream all the way to the ocean. Along the way, there were creatures to avoid and other water peoples to negotiate with. Once in the domain of the Nereids, there was courtly intrigue and negotiations, then the chase to Atlantis to find some underground passages, the battle with the troglodytic Quinnock people, the maze of cave passages leading to the underground ocean, and finally the return to the mountain lakes through the springs. It was... cute. As far as fantasy adventure interacts went, there was nothing new except that everything was underwater. And that was interesting, but my guess was that it'd take a raw three weeks to get through the entire interact, and for three weeks... <laughs> I'd need a lot more plot. But then I probably wasn't the target audience. As I swam around, I noticed that they were using a lot of off-the-shelf scars in the park. In the battle sequences, they only used six or seven augmented scars and iterated them again and again. Any Ra entering into one of these battles would be disappointed to find that every soldier's reaction routine was basically the same. And even many of the principal scars were just PNPs, uh, plug and plays. The Nereid love interest, all of the Nereid court characters, the guide to the Quinnock caverns, they were all just bought off the shelf and plugged into the park. I was surprised that a corpse like Senexa would cut corners that way. But it also gave me an idea. I went back to the Nyad's entrance and poked around the foyer chamber. As I had guessed, there were a lot of plug-and-play scars around, including the toll scars. There were no coders working in this section, so I went up to one of them and looked at its registration at the back of its neck, just below the tether connection. It was made by Dihan Schmidt Corporation. With that bit of information in hand, I left. With luck, I'd be able to do my job off-site. I would need access to a diagnostic read-write lab, one like they had at Distal University. I decided to get back in touch with an old friend. Krebs! Krebs! Yeah? Goyles? Christ your life! <laughs> Good to see you too. I hadn't spoken to Krebs since I'd been kicked out of Distal University. He didn't know anything about me anymore, and I wasn't up to date with him either. He invited me to an Ambit Cafe to catch up. Oh, I thought you were everlasting knackered. I, I, I thought I was too. I got a dose of reality, that's for sure. <laughs> I was downclassed to pewter. Get off! <laughs> Security won't even let pewter class on campus, will they? Uh, I'm not pewter anymore. You, you bumped to bronze in just two years. I'm not bronze either. Don't tell me you're back to uh, silver. No. I've got a gold uni now. <laughs> then someone got married and made God your uncle, or you're into something nefarious. Krebs hadn't changed much. Because he was a quadriplegic, he still preferred to socialize in the ambit, where his avatar was just as functional as anyone's. I could only tell him in general terms what I was doing. I thought that if I told him who I worked for or what exactly I was doing, I thought that might be dangerous for him somehow but to say he was intrigued would be a vast understatement. Krebs lived in the Ambit, and he was thrilled to know someone who was involved in clandestine activity there. He was anxious to help. Yeah, I can get you into the lab, no problem. And Kinia does some work for Diane Schmidt Corp, so I can get him to loan you one of their plug-in plays, too. Or should we nick one so he doesn't know? I'd just as soon nobody knew what we were up to, what I'm up to. Great. I can hack his office, no problem. You want help doing a banger on the PMP? Oh no, slave code routines like my own sippy straw. No. Thanks, but I should do it alone, I think. Come on, Mum, everyone's doing it. <laughs> no, I don't want to get you involved. Nah, 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 don't whinge. It'll be a lark for a kisser. I can use a bit of excite. It's not like I have to worry about some mug breaking my legs. Krebs left the Ambit Cafe and retracted back into the distal system to hack Professor Kinnear's lab. He didn't even wait until after hours. Said he liked a challenge said he'd get back to me in an hour or two. <laughs> While Krebs was getting a plug-and-play scar from Dihan Schmidt Corpse for me, I decided to check in on Five to see how he was doing in the Tanizaki Park. It sounded like a boilerplate thriller, but Five was full of enthusiasm about it. And it was a popular interact, so it obviously had something. The action, intrigue, sex recipe is one that works, I guess. 
All the things people don't have in their lives in the gray. <laughs> a fulfilling entertainment involves unpredictable circumstances, getting thrown out of routine and being thrust into uncertainty, testing yourself in uncomfortable ways. In the gray, fulfillment is avoiding these same things. People want warm beds and full stomachs and predictable tomorrows, not extremes, physically or emotionally. <laughs> it makes you wonder which one is really living. Then I got Kikuko out. She knew about the auction. So she was just telling you about the artifacts that'll be there? Yeah, if I don't know about what's on the block, they'll be on to me. It's where they do business, you know? Where were you and Kikuko when I interrupted you? She was just telling me about the samurai stuff. But where were you? We're safe. I can get back to it. Don't worry where about it. Where were you? Just... Where? You know, we just went someplace safe. A hotel. How old are you? I felt like a parent. Come on, Bio. Nothing's happening. It's just an interact. Five. Remember, I'm going to take over when you get to the apex of the action. I know. All right, then. I may need to know. Within the context of the interact, when I come in, will I have a relationship with this Kikuko woman? Well, yeah, I guess it's... Yeah, I guess. Now I understood why he was so anxious to get back to the Interact. I hadn't realized just how... how comprehensive an education I was offering Five. He was doing what I had asked of him, though, and much more quickly than I probably could have done myself. And after all, he wasn't my kid. I got him to tell me the string of the Interact again, this time including his fling with Kikuko. Then I got back on with Krebs. It had only been a couple of hours, but he had already gotten me a Daihan Schmidt scar to work on. Truthfully, I would have liked to include Krebs, if for no other reason than because he at least would appreciate how audacious and ingenious my plan was. <laughs> I was going to use a Trojan. They hadn't been used in decades. The only people that would even have heard of them were technological history students who had read the footnotes very carefully. As far as I knew, Trojans had never been run through CC engines, and never in the ambit. I was planning to use the equivalent of a bow and arrow against a plasma jet fighter, and I was thrilled because I knew it would work. It would work because it was so unexpected. Yeah, I would have liked to have bragged to Krebs, but I didn't want to involve him, so I kept him in the dark. I made him leave, and then I built the Trojan gear myself. When I was done, I sewed the scar back together, parked it in an accessible address, and took a few, I thought well-deserved, days off. Then, on the day before their opening, I went to Nyad. Security was tighter, but I had a Hicks and Nguyen badge, so I was legit as far as anyone there was concerned. There was activity everywhere, the barely choreographed panic of last-minute patches and refinements. It wasn't hard to get overlooked in the midst of that almost chaos, and I made my way to the entrance section without much difficulty. I unwound their toll-taking scar and attached my little add-on. Then I wound it back up again. From the outside, it looked like the same scar. That was the beauty of it. And the stupidity of an organization like Senexa Corps using over-the-counter gear. I left. Someone would have to open and examine the scar very closely to uncover my small addition. With all the frantic work going on throughout Nyad, I was sure nobody would. I looked forward to the park's opening. As it turned out, though, I wasn't able to be there to enjoy it. That morning, Five contacted me to let me know he'd made it to the last scene in the Tanizaki Interact. I would have taken care of it the next day, after the Nyad opening, but later that morning, Salzer showed up. Giles! Oh, hi, Salzer. This is I'm an unexpected... I'm a little disappointed in you, son. We've given you some latitude, but I didn't expect you to take advantage. What are you talking about? Facia needs that information from the Tanizaki Apex. You'll get it. I'm almost there. I just had a look at the Tanizaki Park's registration. Now, either you found a way to erase yourself from the rolls... Salzer had been checking up on me. He'd be furious if he knew I was having someone else run the park for me. Oh, you haven't been inside that park yet. You said that you don't want to know my methods. I do not consider doing nothing to be a method. You are making a large assumption. Oh, do enlighten me, Giles. 
you are assuming that I need to play through the game in order to get access to the Apex. As far as I know, that is the case. Use your imagination. That is the only way to the Apex for a player going through the Interact. But there are other Ra's who might have reason to access that area. People who work as coders for Tanazaki, for instance. You're not... You're not serious. Or an official working for the CC. They might have reason to access any area of the park. A word of advice. You've got yourself some freedom, but don't go too far. Well, my people at Facia may decide that keeping you at arm's length isn't far enough. If all I did was use your methods, I'd never get what you want done. All I'm saying is, it's a short stroll from being an asset to being a liability. Now, I want something from Tanizaki tomorrow. I had been looking forward to watching the opening of the Nyad Park. I knew it would be a glorious madhouse. But now, I'd have to miss it. I got on with Five and had him bring me up to date with the Tanizaki Interact. So I ducked into the bathroom. It's the only raw rest stop on the ship. Whose boat is it again? Kawabata's? You're Kawabata! Right, 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 right. Jeez! I got it. It's Cy Yang's ship. She's the importer. But she doesn't know about her brother's sideline. Of course not. She's turned over management to Higgs. She just does the charity stuff now. But her brother kidnapped her twins. That's why you're here. All right, that, that's what I'm saying. When you open the bathroom door, they're going to be right there. The final shootout. They have guns. You don't. You know what I mean. Well, you have to remember. And you don't want them to shoot anyway. Kikuko is still tied up in the pilot house. If they hear gunshots, they'll shoot her. And you put in a rivet in the bathroom rest stop? Yeah. I only had enough credit left for three starts, though. You gonna do it now? Yeah, I need it by tomorrow. Well, okay. It's good work, Five. Thanks. You should go. Okay. Remember, they don't know you know about the Westfall shipment. I remember. Okay. What is it? Well, remember that Kukuko's in the pilot house, will you? She's just code five. I know. It's just we've been through a lot. and oh, oh, yeah, Never mind. Just let me know how it goes. I will. Okay. Well, bye. When Five had gone, I went back to the Tanizaki Park and uploaded into the bathroom rest stop. If the Interact required a lot of negotiation, I'd be in trouble. Five had told me most of what he'd done, but there were a lot of details and a lot of names I'd probably forget in the heat of the moment. My hope was it'd be a standard shoot 'em up ending. There was some sort of enhancement on this section, that's what Facia wanted recorded, and bagging it may not even require a successful resolution. I'd have to get in to see and I had three runs at it. I uploaded into the Kawabata avatar in the ship's bathroom. It was a tiny space, but I tested the body as much as I could. I wanted to see how strong it was, how flexible. There was something strange about it, though. It was responsive and very strong, but it was muted somehow. I turned to look at myself in the mirror. I felt my muscles tense even before I knew why, but then I saw it. At the bottom corner of the mirror, a piece of the silver backing had peeled away, and the smoky color of the glass told me that this was a one-way mirror. There was a secret room behind, and I was probably being watched. I wondered if you'd notice. Who's there? I say to you again, I am the shadow of the passing cloud. There is nothing more you need to know. Five had mentioned that there was a mystical element to this interact, and that there was some mysterious figure that appeared from time to time to help things along, some mythical samurai familiar. Open the panel behind you. Inside was an ancient samurai sword. It looked to have been beautiful once, but now it was rusted along the entire length of its blade, and most of the jewel-encrusted hilt had been broken away. Still, it looked formidable. I lifted it out. I hope I've had a tetanus shot recently. The most wise advisors are likely to be ancient. This is my advisor? No man stands alone. Nice platitude. Do you have any practical advice? 
The two men on the left are the least at peace with the world. Meaning they'll shoot first? The bed of the stream is not seen through turbulent water. The superficial cliché a day philosophy coming out of the mirror was the cheap sort of diversion a lot of interacts put around their rest stops. Let the Immersi take a breather from the game, but keep them online so that they continue to rack up credits. I might get some more useful information from the guy behind the mirror, but I didn't have the patience. I wrapped a bunch of toilet paper around the hilt of the sword, so that I could get a good grip on it without cutting myself. Then I opened the door. Strange time to print in bathroom, friend. Directly in front of me was a man in a tuxedo, with a pistol aimed at a woman's head. The woman was bound to a chair and gagged. To my left were two women, each cradling the limp body of a child. To my right were two men, each of them cradling an automatic weapon. This was the tense standoff before the final scene. What I found most interesting about it, however, was the way that my senses were primed. I was alert, but the alertness and heightened perception was being imposed on me from the outside. He's got a sword. I didn't particularly care if I died there, it was only a game, but somehow my inhabiting of the Avatar was being augmented. The tension of the situation was being forced on me, and that augmentation was happening before the action even started. Getting the recording I needed was going to be easier than I thought. I still needed to get out of this situation first, though. Can you give me a reason I shouldn't tell these two to kill you right now? I know about the Westfall shipment. If he knows, Kikuko must know too. I want to show you something. I left it in the bathroom. I'll be right back. I plugged into the rest stop and suspended the Interact again. Facia had heard that the Tanizaki Interact had some special enhancements on the apex of their action sequence. But from what I had seen and felt, it was the Immersi's avatar that was being augmented directly, probably from much earlier on in the Interact. My avatar's muscles had tensed in the bathroom even before I knew why, and then my vision had been drawn to the bottom of the mirror. It was leashed, choreographed from the outside to make the Immersi feel more alert than they really were. It would be most noticeable at the height of the action, but it was present all along. Which meant that I could do my work anywhere. I didn't have to open my recording gear in the middle of some gun battle sequence. I could do it anywhere, even in the ship's bathroom. Which is what I did. I spent the rest of the day prepping six copies of my recording gear. When I was ready, I brought them with me and restarted the Tanizaki Interact. I opened the bathroom door and dropped five slightly different versions of the gear in the middle of the scene out there. The interdictors came in immediately, but like most eyeballs, they couldn't prioritize. They attacked the open gear first and ignored me, like dogs going for the stake and ignoring the burglar. I closed the bathroom door, knowing they'd be busy for a while untangling my gear. Then I opened my real recording gear and did a banger on my own avatar. I was finished and offline before the eyeballs had cracked three of the five gear blocks I'd left for them. I sent the recording I had made over to Salzer, with an attachment explaining how the Immersi's avatar was leashed and enhanced. What exactly the enhancements did, I didn't know, but that was Salzer's problem. I got him the recording. Analyzing it was somebody else's job. After sending the recording off to Salzer, I accessed a news node. I had already missed the Nyad opening, but I wanted to see how it had gone off. Search for Nyad Entertainment Park. Show me anything within the past 12 hours. This report is made possible by Boeing Space, bringing the stars closer to home. Sinexa Corporation's media blitz surrounding its newest interactive entertainment park, <laughs> Nyad, backfired today when the park's grand opening was sabotaged. Yes. The park entrance was closed after only 47 seconds of operation. <laughs> oh, look at Earlier that. today, Sinexa spokesman Terrence is Porter beautiful. issued a terse statement. Sinexa deeply regrets the problems associated with the opening of Nyad. <laughs> we want to assure oh, our sure patrons that this is an isolated incident which will not be repeated. 
We have already begun our investigation, and we feel confident that the responsible party or parties will be found and prosecuted to the full extent of the Universal Corporate Code. I'm here with some disgruntled mercies. What you what you think? They don't give a I mean, what the f they care, right? Not their credit. Oh, yes. I am concerned with security. I am. Emergency interrupt request. Emergency interrupt request. Emergency. Okay. Oh wow. Girls. Crap. You stupid beetle. What have you done? What are you talking about? Nod. That's you, isn't it? What? You bonked the nod opening, didn't you? Didn't you? I can't talk to you about this, Krebs. Cut the whispering pistol, crap, Giles. It was you, Kreb, I know it was. Krebs, calm down. If there was ever a time for panic, it's now, Giles. You may be too stupid to know Kreb, it, but now Kreb, is Krebs, definitely a time. There is nothing wrong. There is everything wrong. You're humped, friend. They don't know who did it. They will. No, they won't. I know what I'm doing. I covered my tracks. It was a construction site until this morning, Giles. So what? All I'll have to do is go back and look through the construction to see what you've done. What? Have you ever done on-site construction coding? No. I have. I've done some sub-jobs. I know how it works. The entire process is recorded. What are you talking about? CC regulations don't allow recording of it. In the ambit! Those regs apply to the ambit, and a park under construction isn't technically a part of the ambit yet. Not until they've passed final inspections and got their papers and opened to the public. That's not true. Uh, don't go ostrich, Giles. That's the way it works. Anything done in a construction zone is recorded. It's routine. All they'll have to do is unpack the bits, replay the construction in your vivisection. Oh, my God. And once they've got you, they'll figure out where you got the Dahan Schmidt scar. So you buried me too, Giles. Krebs was right. I did some quick research and found that it was true... All on-site construction nodes are exempt from the AMBIT's no recording regulations until they pass inspections and open to the AMBIT traffic, so that they'd be able to ID and fix any problems with their coding without having to start from scratch. It made sense. And I ought to have known. <laughs> it was a beginner's mistake, which must have been why they chose me to do the job. Vanity had led me to believe that they had sought me out because of my reputation, but it was my relative lack of experience that really attracted them. They needed their job done, and they knew that no experienced tracker would do it. It was effectively a suicide mission, and only someone who didn't know any better would take it on. I was in real trouble. And I had implicated Krebs, too. I didn't know how much time I had, but I needed to figure something out, fast. I cycled through all the tracker bars, looking through the attendance rolls to see if I could find the guy who had initially approached me, but no Yeti was online anywhere. Using my Fraser ID, I went to the business node for Synexa Corps. But even before I'd gotten access to an information scar, half a dozen lampreys had been attached to my tether. They were monitoring everyone coming into their node. I was screwed. You knackered me too, friend. I'm working on it. The Synexa node is crawling with AI and EI gear. You can't get in there. I know, I've been there. So what do we do? I'm working on it. That's your way of saying your full vacancy, right? Do you have any suggestions? Yeah. Scramble your own noodle. At least that way they won't get to me. Krebs was angry and panicked, which was understandable, but completely unhelpful. I needed to calm down and think. I got offline and went for a walk. Synexa Corpse had a recording of their construction site. They would replay it. They would see what I had done. They'd petition the CC to unscramble my tether, trace the Fraser ID, and eventually get back to me. Unless, of course, Fascia Corpse had already dealt with me, which was likely. They wouldn't want to risk their connection to me being discovered. Okay. I couldn't get at the recordings because of security. Other possible solutions. Could I bribe someone at Synexa? <laughs> no. This was too high profile. They'd get caught. And there probably wasn't enough time anyway. Was there any way to make them not use the recordings? Some way of blackmailing them? Maybe if they thought I was some kind of a powerful person, if they thought I could do them damage. A CC Senate rep or something like that. You are being hailed from an unknown address in Town 3. Oh, God. Uh, <clears throat> Respond. Hey! Five! How did you get this address? Jeez, nice to talk to you, How too. did you get this address? 
I circled the wicket on the stent portal you used last time and did a weevil. Jeez. This is supposed to be a private line. It is. Don't worry about it. I'm just expecting some bad news. Anything I can do? Make me a senator in the CC. Yeah, right. Abracadabra. And I'm a CEO, too. <laughs> Great. Listen, I need to do some work. I'll talk to you later. Anything I can help you with? No. Seriously, I did pretty well on the Tanizaki thing, didn't I? <laughs> this is a little more problematic. I know my way around. Thanks, Five, but I have to do this myself. I could use the word... No, Five. Listen, Bob, I need some credit. Yeah, well, I have some problems of my own right now, Five. Then let me help. Come on, Bob. There is no help, all right? In a couple of hours, I need to become someone very important or someone so unimportant that they'll be invisible. Well, geez, Bio, less than zero is my specialty. Five, I don't have time for this. Seriously, how unimportant you want to be? I know some people out town 17 can get you a pewter uni in about 15 minutes. Just what I need, some pewter class... uni. I could get you in touch with them. Hang on. Five, you still have your pewter uni? Oh, yeah. And you want some work? I need work, Bio. Are you a good liar? Sure. Can you be pathetic? What is that supposed to mean? I couldn't get at Senex's recording to make it go away. I couldn't blackmail them. And I wasn't intimidatingly important. I might, however, be able to convince them that I was somebody embarrassingly unimportant. You got it? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah. Don't Scooby-Doo on me. I won't. All right, you wait here. I told Five about the situation, what I'd done and how I'd done it. He agreed to help. It was an incredible risk for him, but it might be the opening he had been looking for, too. I went into the business sector of the Ambit. I found the address for Senexa Corpse and told the reception scar that I'd come to confess to the sabotage of their Nyad Entertainment Park. <coughs> Uh, uh, all right, you did it, eh? Uh, <laughs> sort of. Uh, sort of. Yeah, who are you? <laughs> My name's Frazier. I'm a tracker for Facia Corpse. All right, Frazier, how'd you do it? You seem a little casual about this. <laughs> well, you're not, you're not the only person confessing to this one. We got a whole crowd. He checks out. <clears throat> Fine, fine. How'd you do it, then? I didn't do it myself, exactly, but I know who did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, listen, and, we have and better I, things and to I, do right time. Than... I know how he did it. How? <clears throat> he replaced the plug-and-play Diehan Schmidt toll-taking scars. He wrote a program so that they'd overcharge and then box-arrest anyone who came into the park. Wait here. You're Fraser. That's right. Facia know you're here? I'm not here on business. I'm here for a friend. <laughs> and this friend is the one who sabotaged our park. He did. He didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> it's a mighty elaborate accident. N not an accident, but not what you think either. He's just a kid. Oh. <laughs> A kid? Yeah, a kid. A pewter class kid. <laughs> He's a menial from Outtown 11. <laughs> Apparently he found a gold uni and got some back alley doctor to set him up with a stent. He's been cruising around on a false ID for a couple of years. A few months ago, he started hanging around tracker bars trying to get someone to hire him. <laughs> we all ignored him, so I guess he decided he needed to make a splash somehow to prove he could do it. Unfortunately, he chose your park. <laughs> Oh, this, this is absurd. Want to meet him? Yeah, yes, yes, fine. I'd like to meet him. I'll be right back. <laughs> We're both on as-is renderings. I, I didn't mean to, sir. I was just trying to show I could do it. None of them thought I could, and so I had to do something big. Not that I meant to do all that I did. Not at all, sir. <laughs> I just needed to Five. find a way Five. to show... Sh shut up, Five. <laughs> Am I to understand that you were the one who sabotaged our park? 
I only meant to box a couple of customers, that's all. <laughs> just for fun, just to show I could do it, you know? So everyone would know I could do it. See, it wasn't supposed to box everyone who came in. I wouldn't have done that. No, no. I didn't want any trouble just to be able to say I did it. See? <laughs> and... And how did you do it? Oh, it was easy. You guys use those plug-and-play Diane Schmitz cars, and you can get those almost anywhere. So I got one, and I fussed with its code. Then I went in and hollowed out your toll takers and swapped the insides with my altered code. Like a Trojan, only that's when the immersive entered enough. the park, that's, they were that's, en- to- that's enough. I didn't mean anything by it, you know? It wasn't personal. And I Five. can make it up to you. Five. Why don't you take off, all right? We need to talk for a minute. I know I'm in trouble, but I'm really sorry, and I can five, really make five, it up if you get just... out of here, all right? I'll call you in a few minutes. Okay. Sorry, sir. Thanks. So anyway, that's him. He didn't know what he was getting into. He's just a kid. And... You can ruin his life here, and I guess I just don't want to see that happen. If he's the one who did this, he ruined his own life. He's just a kid. A kid who's caused billions of credits worth of damage. He didn't mean to. (laughs) And so what? We should forget the whole thing? No, but I don't want you to turn him over to the CC either. And why in God's name would we do anything else? Because he's just a kid. That does not argue clemency to me. All right, how about this? Do you really want the world to know that your spankiest new entertainment park was crashed by a snot-nosed pewter kid? We will prosecute the owner of a gold uni. The rest need not enter into it. But it will. It'll get out. And everyone will know that Senexa was brought low by a pewter menial. And how would that get out? I'm not sure. I just feel pretty confident that it would. You're going out on a mighty thin branch for this kid. Well, it feels sturdy to me. I think Synex has been embarrassed enough already. I think you'll be pretty anxious to avoid anything further. And what did you have in mind? Stop the review of the park construction before it gets to Five doing his job. That way the CC will never know. That's impossible. We'd look incompetent. Not if you let out that you've been approached by the perpetrators. That you're working out a deal, a confidential settlement. We lie to the CC so that we can just eat our loss. You're not going to get anything out of that kid anyway. He's not associated with any other corpse. He's just a prankster. Which is why you don't want anyone to know about him. You can't afford that kind of publicity on top of what you've already got. Why are you getting involved with this? What? It's my good deed for the year. Counteract some of the crap I do on a daily basis. I'll have to confer with some of my associates. Would you care to come with me? Oh, no thanks. I've said about all I have to say. I'm sure they'd like to hear it from you. That's all right, you tell them. But tell them quick. If you let it run through to where Five does his little prank, the CC will know and there'll be no going back. It had gone as well as I could have expected. All I could do now was wait. I took a walk for a couple of hours. I tried in vain to think of something else, but my mind kept returning to the fact that this might be my last walk. What, I wondered, would permanent incarceration be like? (laughs) I didn't want to go back to Borel's apartment in case there were CC constabulary waiting for me, so I went to an ambit parlor and logged into a news node. It didn't take much of a search to find what I was looking for. In a surprise announcement this morning, Senexa Corps has halted its investigation of the sabotage of their Nyad Entertainment Park. Company spokesman Mark Weathers. The perpetrator behind this sabotage has approached Senexa and negotiations for reparations are underway. A confidential settlement is still possible and so I'm reluctant to say anything further at this time. Insiders speculate that another major corpse must be behind the plot. The fact that lost revenues amount to more than 20% of Synex's yearly... They had stopped the replay of the construction. (laughs) They had swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker. I didn't hear from Five for about a week. 
I was reluctant to contact him. Things were still too fresh. But one afternoon, when Borel and I were in the apartment, someone knocked at the door. Five. Hey, Giles. Still kicking, eh? Who is it? It's five. Come on in. Ah, Christ. Oh, no thanks. I'm doing a gig. I gotta go. Good. I just stopped by. What kind of gig you got going? Oh, you know, this he is not... He probably wants to borrow money or something. Hey, Borel, lay off. I don't need any money, Borel. I got a regular job now. Really? Hoodlums unionize or something? No. Giles here introduced me to a guy last week. He gave me a job. You're kidding. Said I showed initiative. Right. I don't believe it. It's true. I just came by to thank you. Uh, well, I think I should be thanking you, too. No problem. Anyway, I gotta go. I'll see you around. Yeah, sure. Thanks for coming by. No problem. Nice to see you, Borel. Five gave me the full story a couple of days later. He had been called into some committee meeting at Senexa not long after I had left. They had grilled him pretty hard, but in the end he convinced them that he was the one who had done the job. They let him go, and stopped the construction replay. Then, a couple of days later, they called him and told him they wanted him to work for them. They told him he didn't have a choice. It was almost what had happened to me. Five was being forced to take up work as a tracker. Only Five was more gung-ho about it than I was. I thought that was the end of it. But then, about two weeks later, someone deposited 100,000 credits in my Fraser account. I hadn't been able to find E. Eddy, and so I had assumed that the second payment for the Nyad job would never come. But it did come, with no explanation. And then, the following day, E. Eddy showed up again. He put us on a private pipe before we even spoke. Fraser. I never expected to see you again. Nor I you. I got the payment. I know. We can continue our relationship, if you'd like. More freelance work, you mean? I do. I'm interested. Good. On a case-by-case basis. Of course. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm wondering how you did what you did. You didn't think I could, did you? No. And you're not going to tell me? No. I didn't think you would. Do you have something for me now? I do. Lay it out. Have you been to the event horizon? What do you need? Here then. Your Bitsetch Corpse is building a structure at the event horizon that has some of the characteristics of a second ambit node. The interactivity T6 feedback array is loaded, but still... The Eddie was back. I was working freelance again. And I continued to work freelance for several months, even while I kept up a full schedule for fascia. I was becoming addicted. <laughs> The freelance gigs were more interesting, more exciting. Well, for a while. Until Fascia gave me their last assignment. They wanted me to track a specter. They wanted me to track him, and then... They wanted me to kill him. The Fourth Ambit is written and performed by Dawson Nichols. Produced with music and effects by Jim Horn. Copyright 2001 by The Ambit Group. All rights reserved. For information on this or any other Ambit Group production, or to order copies, please visit our website at www.ambitgroup.com. Join us for Episode 4, When Giles Stalks a Spectre into the second ambit. Well, that's almost it for this week. We've got some more well wishes for the 20th, though, at least. Here's one through our email at sonicsociety at gmail.com. That's a really good way of getting in touch with us, if ever you want to. Uh, here goes. Uh, so it says, uh, Wow, I can't believe it. I've been listening since the beginning. Downloaded whenever iTunes allows starting each Sunday every show. 
You've introduced me to an untold number of shows, and more importantly, other production teams, so I can always find something new to listen to. However, every Sunday, I make sure I've downloaded the latest Sonic Society before I turn in for the night. Here's to hoping for many years to come. Greg. Thank you very much, Greg. We are also hoping for many years to come. Uh, and uh, that is one of the reasons why I love the Sonic Society so much. It does introduce people to a vast number of shows, uh, both those that have pod faded now and those that are still going. The new people that are coming up through the ranks, people with that desire to tell a story. And, and that's it's, it's wonderful. And another one just came in through audio. Hey, it's me, Nissa. Longtime fan, first time audio recording to the Sonic Society, who is celebrating 20 years of mayhem, which I quite enjoy. And I hope there's another 20 years coming. I want to thank you very much for giving me so many new dramas and so many new experiences throughout the years that I've listened. I haven't been there since the beginning, but I have been here for about 12 years, and I have to thank you. You've kept me entertained, and I really enjoy everything that you've put out there. And let me go explore for various different Audio Adventures. Thank you again. Thank you, Nissa. Yes, enjoyable mayhem and 20 years more, is hoping. Um, yes, don't worry, I haven't been around since the beginning either. I've probably been here, yeah, about the same time. Um, so <laughs> it's good to go on the journey together. But that's now it for this week. Thank you, everyone. And until next week, for Jack Ward and myself, David Alt. Do please take care of each other. Goodbye.